When the DSM-5 came out uh, several months ago, there was so much talk about it and um, a lot of people were debating how it changes diagnostic practice in different areas. What can you tell us about how it's affected diagnostic practice uh, with depression? The DSM-5 actually made very few changes to the traditional uh, depressive disorder categories that we've known about for a long time. So, for example, major depressive disorder and bipolar disorder remained essentially unchanged from DSM-4 to DSM-5. One very important change that happened is that the DSM recognized something we've known for quite some time now, or at least the past 15 years, that the persistence of people's depressive symptoms is actually very important. So individuals who are more chronically depressed, which we typically think about for children and adolescents being a year or longer, and for adults being two years or longer, tend to have more serious outcomes and potentially respond to different kinds of treatment. So the DSM kind of instantiated this by removing the category of dyslimic disorder, which we used to use for um, lower grade symptomatic, but more chronic depressive conditions. That condition was removed. It was combined with chronic depressive episodes into something that's now called persistent depressive disorder. It's not really a new disorder. It's a new way of capturing or categorizing people who would have received different labels in the past. But it communicates to clinicians that individuals who have a chronic course of depressive symptoms uh, are a very a group who requires a lot of attention in terms of intervention and may have different etiology. So that was very important. For children and adolescents, the DSM-5 added an entirely new category, severe mood dysregulation disorder, which is meant to uh, capture a group of children uh, who experience very extreme problems with mood and often non-compliance or other acting out behaviors. This group of children in prior editions of the DSM and the scientific and clinical literature have sometimes been diagnosed with mood disorders, sometimes with uh, disruptive behavior disorders, sometimes received disorders of pediatric bipolar disorder. It's unclear how the addition of this new category will work in clinical practice. It's very new. Uh, there is not there are not many empirical studies from several different research groups to suggest how this disorder will function in clinical practice or what it will predict over time. And so I think it will be very interesting and important to see um, how that plays out in diagnostic practice and even more so in terms of scientific research on the causes of that condition, its distinction with other mood disorders, uh, and treatment for that condition.